podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. In the late spring and early summer, our state saw what seemed to be an unusually high number of black bears roaming into neighborhoods and towns. North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission biologist Colleen Offenbuttle stopped by our studios recently to teach us about black bears. Colleen Offenbuttle, welcome to North Carolina Now. Thanks, good to be here. Now, you are a black bear and fur bearer biologist. And here recently we have had, a, I guess, an increase of black bears coming into neighborhoods. Is that commonplace? Um, it's becoming more common. Uh, we, we've had bears coming through the Piedmont, which would include Durham, Raleigh, Greensboro, to name some of the cities, since about the 1980s. Uh, what's different is we have a lot more people living in the Piedmont, so that increases the chances of someone encountering a bear and seeing a bear. But also we do have a growing bear population in the state. It, it's a success story, wildlife success story for North Carolina in that we have bear populations growing, and as they grow, they're going to start to expand towards the Piedmont, and we're seeing young dispersing bears start to move through the Piedmont more and more. When you look at black bears, what makes, this, makes them unique from, say, any other types of bears or fur-bearing animals in the state? Uh, you know, I've been trying to figure out the same thing, um, even trying to figure out why I'm so fascinated by them and why I chose to study them. And one thing I can think of is I think a lot of people can relate to black bears. Um, you know, when they stand on their legs, they almost take on a, a human posture. Uh, when people can see them up close, like in a zoo, they see some of their behaviors, some of their behaviors that emulate what people do, you know, from just being lazy and napping to taking care of their cubs. So I think people sometimes relate to black bears, and this has been happening for thousands of years. You know, in Greek mythology, they named a constellation after a bear. So it's just, I think, almost something ingrained in us now. Of course, you talk about the increase of bears and, and humans, but when humans come across a bear, are, are there any signs, especially that are non-threatening to humans? Yeah, there, there's quite a few signs that a person might think is threatening, but actually aren't. And one is when a bear does stand up. Um, a bear's sense of smell is much better than their sense of, of sight. So if they're wondering about something, trying to figure out what an object is, whether it's a food source or a person, they're actually going to stand up to try to get a better sense of smell of that object, trying to figure it out. But of course, if someone sees a bear stand up, they view that as threatening, and especially it doesn't help a lot of movies, unfortunately, portray a threatening bear as standing up, but that's not the case. It's just trying to figure out what you are. And then the other thing bears like to do is they'll make vocalizations, kind of grunts, maybe they'll, ch you know, chomp their jaws, and that's all defensive behavior. That, that's what they do when they're nervous, when they think there's a threat, and so they're vocalizing that, saying, hey, please back off, I'm not too sure of you, I'm stressed. And so when that happens, we advise people, just give the bear room, back off. A lot of times what the bear will do is just after making those vocalizations, it'll just run away. Are there any type of threatening signs when it comes to black bears? The main threatening sign is when a bear is, shows no fear of people. So, you know, a bear starts following someone and that person, you know, claps their hands, yells at the bear, makes a lot of loud noises, and the bear still starts to approach them. That is a red flag in their behavior. And it's probably shown that at some point in time that a person either on purpose or incidentally was feeding that bear. So now that bear has learned to identify that if it gets close to a person, it might get rewarded with food. So when we do see bears showing no fear of people and even approaching them and following them, that is when we need to do something to reverse that bear's behavior. Which brings up a good point because some people, when they see bears, they say, oh, it's a pretty bear. I need to go feed it. What is the advice would, that you would give to those folks? I would say, yes, the bear is a beautiful animal, uh, but please, a, a fed bear is really a dead bear. As soon as that bear is rewarded by giving human food, it's going to start to approach not only that person, but other people wanting more food. And so that's when we have to step in and perhaps do something to correct the behavior. And unfortunately, if that bear has gotten used to being around people and getting food from people, unfortunately, we usually have to euthanize it in order to protect public safety. Um, luckily, we haven't had 
to do that for many years in North Carolina because people, once we educate them, seem to listen to our advice, which is a great thing. But again, people just need to let, uh, let the bear find food on its own. Bears have been living in North Carolina for thousands of years without human help. Let them continue to do so. Now, you've talked about, the, I guess, the area increasing where the, the bears mm -hmm. are, are showing up. But is there anything that the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission is doing to ensure that bears thrive? Yes, we're, we've done several things. Um, as I mentioned earlier, bears are a wildlife success story that all North Carolinans should be very proud about. Um, back in the 70s, bear populations were so low that some people wanted us to list the bear as a threatened species. Um, since that time, we've established what are called bear sanctuaries. Those are mainly located in certain areas of the mountains and in the coastal areas. And so those are areas in which the bears are protected. Uh, we've also implemented regulations to control the harvest pressure. We have our enforcement officers to enforce those regulations. And then uh, also just education of people, telling people how they can live with bears, because over time we've seen bears have really started to adapt to our fragmented habitat. They're starting to adapt to more human disturbances. The key to their success in the future is can people adapt to living close to bears. Now we've talked about not feeding the bears, right. but what should someone do if they happen to see a bear? One, I would say don't panic. Um, I would, you know, of course I'm biased because I'm a bear biologist. I would personally, you know, I, I enjoy any time I see a bear, but I do take precautions to make sure that I'm safe and that I don't do anything that might cause the bear to be nervous. And that is mainly staying a respectable distance. You know you're getting too close to a bear if it starts, again, those defensive vocalizations. So just stay far enough away, maybe go into your house and enjoy the bear from inside your house looking through the window. And then I would say afterwards, talk with your neighbors and look around your neighborhood, around your house, making sure you don't have anything that might be attracting the bear to that area, such as bird feeders, unsecured garbage, and even dirty grills. Um, sometimes we see over Memorial Day weekends, you know, when everybody's outside grilling, those smells, they attract people and they attract bears. So we really recommend trying to keep your grill clean. And if you do all that, the chances of a bear coming to your house is very, very low. And of course, if people want to find out more about black bears or other types of wildlife here in North Carolina, where can they go? Well, we sure hope that they would go to our website. It's ncwildlife.org. And if they go to our website, we have a section just on black bears. And whether you live in a residential neighborhood or you live out on the farm, we have information geared just for you so you can figure out how you can live with bears in your area. Colleen Ofenbuttle, you are the black bear and mm -hmm. fur bearer biologist with the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. Thank you for stopping by and sharing all that great information. Thank with you us. for having me. I always love talking about black bears. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.